and welcome back to Pip Explorers. This week we're learning about how to deal with hypothermia in a cave. So most seasoned cavers know this, but the best way to deal with hypothermia is something called a Palmer furnace. So this week we're going to learn what a Palmer furnace is, what you need to make a Palmer furnace, and how to use a Palmer furnace underground. So let's crack into it. So you need three, four-ish things to make a Palmer furnace. The first thing you need is a contractor bag. Now the purpose of a contractor bag is you're going to put the hypothermic person inside of it. So a contractor bag works better than your normal garbage bag because one, it's thicker, and two, they're typically bigger so you can fit a whole person in more easily. The second thing you need is a candle and a way to light your candle. So I always carry waterproof matches and an Altoid tin candle. If you do not know how to make an Altoid tin candle, check out my video last week. If you don't want to carry an Altoid tin candle, you'll want to have some sort of pillar candle. A tea light will not work as well due to the fact that they're so small and the flames are so small. They really just don't produce that much heat. So you want a bigger, beefier type of candle such as a pillar candle or those Altoid tin candles that we learned how to make last week. And the third thing that you might want is some sort of ground cushion. So if you have a Swego, the inserts out of your Swego work great. You can also just use a dry cake pack or anything dry that the person who is hypothermic can sit on. Now the purpose of a Palmer furnace is like any other thing that we use in caving to stabilize your hypothermic person. This is not going to completely get rid of the hypothermia and if you have to use a Palmer furnace you should immediately start making your way out of the cave. The goal in a properly executed Palmer furnace is to contain the person's body heat and the heat from the candles inside of that trash bag to warm up their core. Again, this is not going to completely get rid of hypothermia, but hopefully it will be enough heat to stabilize the person so that they can get themselves out. In my years of caving, I've only actually had to use a Palmer furnace one time, but that one time it was super important. We had two members of our team become hypothermic and a third that went into shock and all three were put into Palmer furnaces to warm up before we headed out. Palmer furnaces truly are an important thing to know how to use inside the cave. So let's go ahead and learn how we do a Palmer furnace. So the first thing you're going to do is remove any wet clothing. If you're hypothermic inside of a cave, it is highly likely that it's because you're wet. Sitting in your wet clothes is not going to help warm you up, so remove any wet clothing. Once you've removed all wet clothing, you're going to rip a head size hole in the bottom of that contractor bag. Place it over the hypothermic person's head. Again, you don't want that hole to be too big, so we like to rip a small hole and then rip it as you go over the head so that the hole isn't letting out a bunch of air. Wrap that bag all the way down to their feet. Sit them on whatever type of cushion you have, so your Swago inserts, your dry cave pack, a flannel, anything to keep them off of that rock. Place the candle by their feet, light it, and let it do the work. What the candle is going to do is it's producing heat because it's fire, you know, fire is hot. And that heat plus the body heat of the person inside of the trash bag is going to collect inside of that trash bag. The idea is that it's going to then warm up that person and you can make your way out. If you guys have any questions about Palmer furnaces, let me know in the comments below. This is a life saving tool. That's all we have for this week. Don't forget to like and share with all of your caving friends. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and at pithexplorers.com. Don't forget to check out that new shop, and we will see you next week. Bye, guys.